real feelings, real bona fide feelings, but they're based on false information. All right. Amen. Amen. That's where I live. That's where I live. I don't know about you, but that's where I live. Too many times in a day, too many times in a week, I begin to formulate feelings based on what I think is accurate information, only to find out that really the information that I'm basing it on is irrelevant. I'm a child of the King. Amen. It doesn't matter what the facts are in this life. It doesn't matter what I'm told, what I see, what I hear. It doesn't matter what my feelings are telling me. According to God, they're false. Let me give you some scripture so you'll understand where I'm coming from. In the book of Romans chapter 4, I'm going to be reading down from 14 to 22. Listen to the word of the Lord this morning. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace, to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now, I want you to pay close attention as we begin reading in the next verse. Now, I'm not going to read that which is in parentheses, but I'm going to read before him, whom he believed even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Oh, that's, that's a powerful verse. My feelings get in the way of that. My feelings get in the way. Oh, I'm so blah this morning. We're not really going to have church today. I, I feel it down in my soul. I'm struggling. I'm sluggish. I'm really not where I need to be spiritually. I, I really didn't pray. And, and that's all bad. And that's all real. But, you know, really and truly, when I get here, I can make up my mind. I'm here now. And I'm going to press through. Because God can call those things as though they were. He can say, hey, they may not be where they are at, but I'm calling them as they are. I'm calling them still the children of the Most High God. I'm calling them that they're going to get a blessing. I'm calling that they're going to get a healing. But if we live in our real feelings, we will get nothing from God. Feelings are not faith. Feelings are based too much on a law. Oh, yes, they are. Condemnation is because of our feelings based on the law that we didn't keep. Oh, that's better than good. Because where no law is, how can there be condemnation? Where no law is, how can there be a transgression? Where no law is, how can I have any feelings at all? My feelings come that I'm not living to a place that I expect that I should be or that God expects me to be. Therefore, my feelings get in the way of my walk of faith. Amen. This is some powerful preaching for me. I live too much in my feelings. Based on false information. You say, wait a minute, Pastor. I know it's true. It's irrelevant. Faith is not there. Faith in this, those things that are not that God said that are. Amen. Stay with me. You see, Abraham, he understood that even though he might have sacrificed his son of promise, God was able to raise him up. In fact, in his own mind, he was already resurrected. Right? Amen. If the real feelings have gotten the way, based on real facts, that if I put this knife to his throat, he is going to be dead. That's real, real feelings, isn't it? Yeah. And that's based on what we think is real facts. But really, it was irrelevant because faith operates outside of, outside of earthly, carnal, human facts. It operates in a realm that we no longer really understand until we get there. Then when we get there, we say, you know something, what was I worried about anyway? Why was I so upset anyway? Why was I so emotional anyway? Look what God has done for me. 
And then he goes on to say, who against hope. Against my son ever being resurrected. Against my son being ever alive again. I'm fixing to put this knife to his throat. I have laid him on the altar. He is fixing to be a sacrifice. He is fixing to breathe no more. His heart's not going to beat anymore. He's not going to be able to walk down from this mountain with me anymore. Against hope. He believed in hope. Yeah. Because his real feelings had to get out of the way. He could not believe the false information. What his carnality was telling him. He had to believe that when God made a promise. He was able. That he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered, staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving God. To glory. Mm, glory to God. Excuse me. Being, being fully persuaded. Right. Yes. Fully persuaded. That what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Now listen to all of this. At the end it says, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Amen. Amen. I want to be righteous before the Lord. In faith, not according to the law. Right. Then I can't let my real feelings. Amen. Which is based on false information. All right. Get in the way. I've got just a little ways to go, but I'm sensing the power of God. John 8, 42 through 44 says what? Jesus said unto them, if God were your father. If God were your father. You would love me. You would love Jesus. Amen. All right. If God is your father, you would love Jesus. Go ahead. For I proceeded forth and came from God. All right. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Go ahead. Why do ye not understand my speech? Why do you not understand his word? Even because you cannot hear my word. Even because you cannot really hear it? How many times has the preacher preached, as Brother Colossians would say, his guts out? Right. But because of your real feet. Based on what really is false information. Oh, right. You sit there and receive nothing. Yeah. Whether it be, whether it be, oh, the preacher doesn't like me. Whether the preacher's got my number. Whether the preacher is preaching to me. Whether the preacher is trying to hurt me. Let me tell you something. It's irrelevant what that preacher's trying to do. If the word is coming forth, receive the word. Yeah. It's all about the word. It's not about the preacher. It's not about his delivery. It's not about what you had going on before service. It's about the word of God. It can do more than your feelings. It can do more than any information in this world. It can give you something that you didn't know existed. Yes. Go ahead. Ye are of your father the devil. No, really? Jesus said that? Yes, he did. He was looking at the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the chief rulers of the Jew, and he said, you are of really a devil. Yes. What he said, you're a devil. You're a devil because you don't believe me. You don't believe the word of God, so you're a devil. I mean, isn't that the truth? Yes. If, if, if their yes. father was Satan, that means they're a child of Satan. That means he was calling them a devil. Wow. Wow. And the lust of your father you will do. Come on. He was a murderer from the beginning. From when? The beginning. From the beginning. And abode not in the truth. Uh-huh. Because there is no truth in him. Come on. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Amen. You understand? Listen to me for a moment while I slow down. When you get those real feelings that you think are based on real facts, the devil will capitalize on that and begin to lie to you. All right. Amen. Oh, it's bad. Amen. It's real bad. Amen. It's real bad. Why even go in there? You know, the pastor, he's going to be in one of those moods. You know, he gets moody sometimes. And that pastor, when he gets moody, the fire comes out. You know what I'm saying? And, ooh, why can't it be just when, you know, he's humorous all the time, honey? I'm not called to be a Amen. comedian. All right. All right. Amen. So if it is funny, enjoy it. Okay. 
but understand I'm coming back to serious reality. Yes. And so have you ever been there? You really got these feelings that you think are based on real facts and maybe in your mind or maybe in this world they are, but with God, uh-uh, no, it's false information. And you begin to live in there and you begin to think everybody's against you. Everybody doesn't love you. Everybody is just really out, including the pastor, his family. God doesn't care for you anymore. It's always going to be that way. I'm always going to be in this situation. I'm always going to have these emotions. I'm always going to be depressed. I'm always going to have to fight the same battle. Do you understand who's telling you that? Yeah, yeah they're real feelings, but it's based on false information because the devil is a liar. God said you're a new creature. God says all things are passed away before all things become new. God said, renew your mind. God said. Yeah. So who are you going to believe? The Father? This could be the devil or it could be God. You have to choose who's your father. All right. All right. All right. Yes, you're going to have to do some choosing. When you get those real feelings, honey, and you're going to get them. Some of you came in with them. Right. When you get those real feelings. Some of you get real feelings that you think you got to leave this place to find happiness. Some of you get real feelings that you think you got to, to change your whole world to, to get happiness. Some of you think that, man, if I can just move here, if I can just move there, if I can get this job, if I can get this spouse, honey, you'll never find happiness outside of God. You may have real feelings, but it's based on false information. The true information is that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. talking about. We've all experienced this. Yes. Amen. We all go through this more times than we'd like right. to right. recount. Right. If we're honest, all of us should be standing up and say, Preacher, you got my number yes. today. These facts I have are true. I, 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 I've corroborated it. I, I've got this, I've got that, I've got the person tell me face to face. Really? And that's what you want to live in. All right. I think I'd rather live in God that calleth those things that not that though they are. In other words, if you God forbid. Yes, I'm using this brother of mine whom I love, if he looked me in the face and said, I can't stand you, Pastor. You know what God was saying? Oh, yeah. One day you will love me. Amen. Amen. Yes. yes. And so I, got, I can choose to either have real feelings based on what I think I just heard that was factual, or I can live in faith and say, well, that's okay for now, but I'm going to love you and care for you until you love me. Go 
see them. Yes. And then Sister Melissa got sick and she didn't get out and God said, go back and see them. I could have said, come, you know how they feel about me. I could have been like Elijah. Oh, you know Jezebel wants to get me. I could have hidden in a cave. But no, God said, you get up. I'm calling those things that are not as though they are. You might have real healing, but it's based on false information. I know that man. I know his heart. I know that man. I know his soul. You just go and pray and let me do the rest. The devil is a liar. John 10, 10 says, If he cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy, and I am come that they may have life, and they might have it more abundantly. I, I really don't have time, but I'm just going to let you know I'm going to be reading out of the book of Mark and Matthew. I'm going to be referring back to Mark, and I'm going over to John, and I'm going back to Matthew, and I'm going to tell you some true illustrations of real feelings, okay? Here were the disciples. Jesus said, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. Right. And they're going out on the Sea of Galilee, and I've been on that sea, and I can understand it. It's kind of like, uh, uh, I wish I could remember the name of the lake right now, out in Vernon. What's the lake name in Vernon, that big one? Buchanan. Yeah. And Buchanan, you know, the wind got to blow, and the waves got high, and the ship was being tossed. And guess where Jesus was? He was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. That's why I know it's okay to have pillows in the bed. All right. <laughs> the more the merrier. Amen. We sleep on a pillow. Real feelings, honey. They, that's real. They were worried about dying on the Sea of Galilee. He was fishermen that fished on that sea for a living. But now they were afraid. They had some real feelings. Then they said, look at the waves. Look at the wind. This is real deal here. This is not false information. Jesus, don't you care that we perish? He was still sleeping. Why? Because he said, he said, let us go to the other side. How can he lie? It doesn't matter what came his way. They were going to the other side. It didn't matter what storm. Let me tell you something. The storm of life is just a possibility for you to experience a miracle. Yeah. But if you live in real feeling, you'll never see it. But if you get out of that false information, So they went out, and you would have thought by now they would have had faith. Yeah. They All would right. understand real feelings, you know. You're really ain't cutting it with God. Yeah. Oh, i got a newsflash for you. He's ever making intercession. Amen. Oh. He's still, it may not be the earthly mountain, but he's somewhere in glory. In the office of the high priest, after the order of the Ketodak, ever living to make intercession for me. He's praying. They're trying to sick me. He said, Peter, it's all right. I pray for thee. And I say, fail not. I'm going to heaven. My God is praying for me. He's praying. Yeah. That's not enough. All you got to do is 
make your way to the Holy Ghost and understand that it's God that maketh intercession for me. Praying. Moaning and groaning. I don't have to understand it. Right. Well, here we go. The Sea of Galilee got contrary. And they thought, we're going to die. He's not sleeping the pillow this time. We're going to die. Couldn't somebody have, couldn't somebody say, wait a minute, wait a minute, Peter, calm down. He said, go to the other side. We're going to be all right. Remember, he went to pray. He's praying. We're going to be all right. Just hold on and ride the storm and look for the miracle. They would have not seen him walking on the water if they weren't looking for a miracle. If they weren't looking for something other than themselves. All of a sudden they looked out on the gross for sea and they saw what they thought was a spirit. And he would have passed them by. But they got out of their real feelings and said, okay, it could be him. Jesus, is that you? And he said, yeah, it is I. And Peter got out of real feeling. It was still bolstering. It was still coming in the boat. But Peter said, it is thee. Bid me to come. And he said, come. And he stepped out on the storm. Right, right. And the miracle man, he face to face. <laughs> but he couldn't believe the miracle. All right. All right. Yes. Sometimes your miracle meets you face to face. Amen. And you can't believe it. Because it's still in the midst of a storm. All right. You thought your miracle would be everything. Blue skies. Calm waters. Oh yeah. I can walk on glass. But this miracle, this storm brought a miracle that preachers have preached about uh, since the first century church. Uh, oh my goodness, that was Peter walking in the midst of a storm uh, and Jesus, Jesus did not touch him when he walked on the water. He just said, come. Right, right. So Peter went out, walked on water. What a miracle that faced him in the storm. And then he got to looking around with real feelings based on false information. When I say false information, I'm talking about biblical information. I'm not talking about worldly information. I'm talking about biblical information. He began to take his eyes off the word. Off the word. Yes. Off the word. He began to let his real feelings control him. You read it. He looked around at the waves and became fearful. Peter just kept walking, looking at Jesus. They could have walked back in the boat together. Mark talks about Jairus' daughter and how she was laid sick of a fever. And Jesus was coming and was going to heal that daughter. And we know the story that happened before that. And after all of that miracle that God wrought, he was going to this man's house and they told him, don't trouble him anymore. But Damn, so it's dead. That's real feelings. Yes. That's real feelings, but is it based on true information or false information? See, now you're having a hard time with that, aren't you? Because see, this is not where my eternity rests. This is not who I am in this temporal world. Yes. And so even though that the damsel was dead, Jesus said. She just sleeping. And they begin to laugh him to scorn. And so he put out the unbelievers. And he told the father, can I just, can I just verify? Don't worry about it. I got it under control. Can you imagine the Lord speaking to you when it is so evident that something in your life is now dead. And he says, don't worry about it. I've got it under control. If I can just get unbelief out of here. Right. And so he put them all out. And he took three disciples with him, if I'm not mistaken. And they went in. They went in. 
And Jesus spoke to her. And said, Damsel, I say to thee, arise. Took her by the hand. And she got up. That storm was just a miracle to happen. Yes. What if Jairus would have said, Never mind, Lord. They've already told me I trust them. They're my friends and my servants, my family members. They've already told me there's no hope. She's dead. That's okay, Lord. Go back. What if, what if you would have said that? <coughs> Most likely, Jesus would have turned around. What about Peter and the disciples after? After the crucifixion. After they put Jesus in the tomb. That's real feelings. Yes. Based on what seems to be real facts. But it was false information. What about when he fed the 5,000? Right. Real feelings, honey. They were hungry. I don't know about you. But those little fishes and loaves wouldn't have fed one of you. Because I know how some of you can eat. Amen. Can you imagine the lie? Can you imagine the pushing and the shoving? No, he called me up. I'm special. He called me up to the front. Get back there where you belong. But he didn't say, don't worry about it. Even the disciples didn't believe. And so he blessed you. So amazing here. There was a need, right? You ever had a need? Yeah. We know he meets needs. Yes, amen. Now he could have fed them with nothing left over. Right. Okay. He could have satisfied the need. He would have met the need. Still would have been a miracle. But you see, he goes beyond the need. So, can I tell you, you have real feelings, but as a child of God, they're based on false information. Yes. Your storms of disappointments, of discouragement, of anxiety and hopelessness, you just feel in the blank. All right. Right? Or just a possibility yeah. for a miracle. Yeah. So I'm hoping that many of you, when you get these real feelings like some of you came in with, and you think they're based on genuine and they could be, as far as this world is concerned. Right. But with God, right. it's based on false information. Right. I hope that you'll get another mindset about one another. About your pastor when he has to preach certain things. About your job. About school. Teenagers, you better get another perspective than what you've yeah. got. Amen. Yes. Right. Are you going to find the world chew you up and then it's going to spit you out. Yes. And I hope you can get back in the boat. Why don't you just stay in it? Right. If you don't want to believe me, talk to some of the teenagers that have went down a long road. Ask right. them and if they're honest, right. they'll tell you. Right. right. Yes. Amen. Real feelings. Real feelings. Face. False information. If you'll stand this morning, do what you feel that to do. You know, that'd be another good thing to put on your refrigerator. Wait a minute. Some of you have God, I'm sure. There's no give up to God. Amen. And so why don't you just add under that real feelings based on false information. Storms are a possibility of a miracle.